This is a video on the topic of logic and circuits. In a circuit, we can talk about switches. The switches can be in an open position, like this diagram here, or the cl a closed position. So when it's in an open position, you could call that um, a zero, and you can make the connection to logic by calling that false. And then in the closed position, we can call that one, and we can call that true uh, in logic. So we have this sort of binary zero and one, true and false uh, choice for switches in a logic circuit. So here's an example, simple circuit, where we have a symbol here for a battery and a symbol for a light bulb. And in this circuit, we could have the switch on or off, and so that would turn the light on and off. So right now, it looks like it's open, so the light is off. This is a position that's zero. These are just slightly more complicated circuits here where there's two switches. Um, in this case, imagine there was a battery there, light bulb here. If we had both of these uh, in, the, in the off or open position, you could imagine that uh, electricity would not flow through those two. You could call them gates. Actually, it's because they're open that the electricity doesn't pass through. Uh, and so... And we, we could say that these are switches in series. The only way that you would actually get the electricity to flow through is if, if they were both closed. So this sort of operate as an AND. In this case, it's like an AND between the two zeros, and so overall it's just off. These are two switches P and Q that are in parallel in the diagram. In this case, they're both off. But you could see how if either one of them was closed, electricity could pass through that gate. So you can refer to these combinations of switches as gates, logic gates. So this, is a, this is a gate, this is a very simple gate. Uh, this is a little bit more comp complex gate. Uh, this is what actually um, work like an OR. Uh, in this case, it's, it's still off because both P and Q are off, but we could say zero OR zero it's going to equal zero, just like if you had false or false uh, equals false. But the switches in parallel operate like an OR, and these switches in series, they operate like an AND logically. The only way that you could pass through that gate is if both P and Q were true or they were both ones. But here, if either one of them or both of them was a one, then the electricity could pass through that gate. So then what we could do is look at some basic operations in logic, the negation, the ands, and the ors, and build logic gates with those uh, logic operators. So we have symbols for each of these logic gates. So the negation, or the not, is just to reverse the signal. So if it was one uh, or on, then to negate it switches these. Uh, signal to a zero, and if the signal begins at a zero, the negation, the not uh, gate, will switch the value to a one. It's just like I'm using ones instead of true, and zero instead of false. So these gates, the and and the or, are, have their own symbolic figure in a diagram of the circuit. So the symbol or diagram for an AND gate. And the AND gate works exactly like AND in logic. It is true when both the P and Q are true. So in the, in the circuit analysis, we just say it's a 1 only when both P and Q are, uh, have a, are equivalent to the signal 1. Uh, in the OR gate, if either P or Q or both are one, then the output from the OR gate is a one. So that's a picture of the not, the AND, the OR gates. Now I can do a conditional also because I can turn the conditional to an OR, and then we could create new symbols for com you know combinations of these. Um, I think I won't go that far right at the moment. I'm just going to stick with these three because we could build everything from these three. Okay, so in this video, I'm just going to look at what are called combinatorial circuits. I'm not really sure why the word combinatorial is used, but basically um, these are circuits ultimately that just don't sort of feed back into themselves, and that's the distinction.
yeah, so they could be called combinatorial or combinational circuits. And this is all as in contrast to the sequential circuits. And the sequential one is where you can have output that goes back into uh, the circuit um, and uh, you create that sort of um, feedback. But we, we don't have circuits like that in this particular uh, video. All of the circuits that we look at will follow these uh, sort of four basic principles that we're never going to combine two input wires. What I mean by that is that the P and the Q will never merge into one variable. Um, a single input wire can be split part way. So basically what that means is that you could have P show up in several parts of the gate, like it could be used repeatedly. And, and you'll see definitely plenty of examples of that. But um, you can split it uh, and use it repeatedly. So that signal can go can feed into several gates. That's that's what this this second uh, item is saying, that the single uh, signal from one of your variables could be split into multiple gates. Um, it says an output wire can be used as input. What you're saying, what we're saying there, is that for any gate like this picture here, the not the output can be fed into another input into another gate. So you can have um, these things sort of build like a tree, where um, each of these branches are feeding into uh, more and more gates like the output here this r could then be tacked into another whole gate so the outputs can be inputs but you never take those outputs and put them as inputs back into the same circuit so, so outputs can be inputs but not back into the entire circuit uh, so that's the last point no output from a gate can eventually feed back into that same gate uh, if you do that you've got a sequential circuit that's something else these are combinational or combinatorial circuits. Okay, let's look at the first example. Determine the output signal and write the Boolean expression for this particular uh, circuit. So it's telling us the input signals. So we can determine the output first. We can just say, well, if the input signals for P, this is a zero, I'm going to put zero here. And for Q, this is one. And so I can just interpret logically, what does the, the not gate do? to the signal. It reverses the, the, the value. So this would become a 1 right after passing through that gate. And then I can see that these two signals pass into this gate, and they're both 1s. And what's the rule for uh, for AND? It is uh, 1 if either, uh, only, I'm sorry, it, it is 1 only if both of them are 1, which is exactly the case. So this becomes a 1 because there's an AND of these two 1s. And so my answer is the output is 1. Now it says write, a circ write the circuit as a Boolean expression. What they mean there is using P's and Q's and R's and the symbols, uh, the logic symbols. So um, the way to do that is if you sort of work backwards through the gate and say, well, there's, it's an AND ultimately of these two inputs, but the P has been negated before it goes into the AND. So I'm going to say if you form the negation of P, and take an AND with Q. That's what this AND is, this AND here. It's an AND of the negation of P. So we AND together, let's say, uh, link together by AND these two inputs, the negation of P and Q, and with Q. And that's it. So that, that's the answer. And you could say that is logically equivalent to the, to the uh, Boolean expression R. So just writing the Boolean expression is this, but I just want to make a point that these are now logically equivalent. R would be logically equivalent to whatever the value of this is. It could be different depending on the signals for P and Q, but R would always be the same truth value or let's say same signal value uh, as this expression. Let's go to number two. Let's determine the output signal for this one and write this circuit as a Boolean expression. And let's do that specifically in this case where the input signals are given. P is 1, Q is 0, R is 1. So I'll go through and just write down now. I know that this signal here at this point is a 1. This is a 0, and R is a 1. Now when I, when I take these two signals and they pass through the OR gate, 
the rule for or is you get a one if either of the signals is one and one of them is a one. So I know that when it passes through that gate, it's still going to be a one. But then this signal is just going to remain one. And then actually, of course, passing through the not gate, the one is going to turn into a zero. And so now I have an input of one, an input of zero, and I take an and of those two signals. Only way that you get a one with and is if they're both one and they're not both one. So the output zero. So we'd have to say S because that's the output signal. It is, um, let's say, equivalent to, to zero under those inputs. And then generally, it would be equivalent to some Boolean expression that we could form now by, again, sort of working backwards. I have to link together R and the negation of P and Q. When you take an AND, it's commutative. It doesn't matter which order you write it. So I might choose to write the R first, say R AND, but then I want to negate. So actually, I think it'll be convenient just to write it like this. And the negation, it's the, it's, so I'm working backwards. It's a not of the OR, and the OR applies to P with Q. So it's the negation of P or Q that uh, is the Boolean expression that is equivalent to S. So if we went through and did a truth table for this whole entire thing, or you call it a one zero input output table because it's not really trues and falses. Um, precisely in this context, it's ones and zeros. So the input output table um, would be equivalent to doing a truth table and um, we could determine the, the output S in every case for these three variables, P, uh, P, Q, and R. Okay, so let's just write the Boolean expression uh, for this particular circuit. Uh, we don't have to evaluate it. Uh, it just asks us to, to write the Boolean expression. All right, so these little dots are telling me that this P and Q is repeating in more than one operator. And I think it, it helps to explain it to just say, let's begin with the overall uh, last uh, operation here is an AND. So it's an AND of the two inputs that come into it. And what are they? They are a negation of this AND, which is a AND of P and Q, and is an AND with the OR. So uh, it doesn't you know, there's a, ORs and ANDs are commutative. It doesn't matter which one you put first. Let me start with P or Q. If I read this OR right here, and I want to take an AND, as I'm reading this AND here, the negation of the AND of P and Q. So the negation of the AND of P and Q. So that's it. That's all this asked for. And the question that naturally comes up, is there any other way to write it? And, and the answer is yes, there is. And another question, is there any other way to write it that's simpler? Um, and mm, sort of not really. I could rewrite it. Uh, the only way that I could really write this one simpler is to come up with a definition for a new symbol because this is a fundamental form that is what's called the exclusive OR. And so I could make a symbol for the exclusive OR um, and that would make it look simpler if I just said this is just the exclusive OR with P and Q. Um, but that's sort of cheating. Uh, it doesn't really significantly simplify if you're going to stick with those um, ands and ors and negations. Although it can be written, even the diagram could be drawn differently to have an equivalent um, expression. I'm going to just sort of dive, um, divert into sort of a little tangent here on an equivalent form for this guy, because I think it's kind of an interesting little analysis. I'm going to use some set theory to justify a different way of writing this um, and talk a little bit about that. So. Um, what I want to do is rewrite this statement in an alternate form. And so let me begin by just recopying it on the next page. P or Q and not P and Q. 
Well, if you could almost sort of intuitively say, if we are looking for when would you have P or Q and not P and Q, you could you could really I could I think you could visualize and and that's where I really wanted to take this. Um, let's visualize it with sets with a Venn diagram. Um, let's say that we've got two sets that we will call P and Q. And imagine that if you are in set P, make that a 1. And if you are in set Q, make that a 1. Uh, you could be in both you know, P and Q. So what I want to do is I want to, I'm going to use this, I guess I'm going to number this 1, 2, 3, 4, because those are useful uh, numberings of the regions. And so what I mean is that if you're in region 1, that means P is true and not Q. If you're in region two, both P and Q are true because you're in both regions. Region three means Q is one and uh, P is zero. In other words, you're only in Q but not P. And region four would be both P and Q are both false uh, or both both zero if you're in neither region. And so let's 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 call this. Uh, let's let's look at a set or statement. And then let's look at the region in that Venn diagram. So if I just take the statement P or Q, this is like a union. You could be in P or in Q. And so that's in region, that's really regions one, two, and three. Uh, if, if this were true, you could be in region one or in region two or in region three. And this statement would be true. Let's look at the region P and Q. What region? would you be in if this was true? It would just be region two. Let's look at uh, maybe the negation of P. What region is that? It's just when you're not in set P or when P is false, it would be regions three and four because you're outside of the set P. And negation Q, negation Q would be when you're not in the set Q, which would be regions one and four. So how about the region not P or not Q? What region is that? Not P or not Q. So that's like a union of the negation P. Here's negation P, it's this region. Negation Q, this region. If you do an or of these guys, you're going to get like a union. It's either one or the other or both. So it's regions one and three and four. Either not P or you're not Q, which means you could pick up um, being either in region one because it's not Q, or region three because it's not P, or region four because that's neither P nor Q. Okay, so now I want to add one more on my list and then hopefully I'll make some sense about why I'm doing all this, but let me put one more on here. That's the negation of P and Q. What region is P and Q? It was region two, so the negation would be everything except for two, which is one, three, and four. Well, actually, right there you can see De Morgan's laws being uh, proved that negation of P and Q is equivalent to not P or not Q because they represent the same regions in that diagram. Um, and what am I trying to do here is I want to figure out what are the regions for the entire statement that we were given uh, up here. This P or Q and not P and Q, or the negation of P and Q. Well, it's, it's um, here's the P or Q. That's regions 1, 2, and 3. And here is the negation of P and Q. That's this whole thing. That's regions 1, 3, and 4. And if I put an and together of those, <laughs> what the cat just came by and swatted the stylus as I was writing. <laughs> That was Iggy. Okay, um, I want to do an and of this, uh, these regions, and these regions. So that that's and is like an intersection, and so it would be uh, only those regions which are in common, uh, in common with these two. So what is in common in these two groups? One is in both, and the three is in both. Okay. So what does that mean? Regions one and three, just this and just this. Not region two, 
just regions uh, 1 and 3, this Boolean expression corresponds to just those regions. And this is what's called the exclusive OR. So the purpose of that uh, whole table was to come up with these regions for which this uh, Boolean expression uh, corresponds. And then I could say that that's the same thing as this expression. I could say that it's equivalent. This is equivalent. It could be written in another way. It could be written as P and not Q or not P and Q. And I could, I could also use this same process to justify that. Let me write out, let's, let's put a, uh, let's put P and not Q in here on my list. P and not Q, what region is that? Well, P is uh, regions one and two. So maybe if I'm going to do P and not Q, I should just start by saying what P is specifically. P is actually regions one and two. P and not Q is what's in common with P and not Q. That's actually just region one. How about, I think we could do negation P and Q just directly. What region do we have not P and Q as being true? So not P but Q, that would be just region three. So if I did P and not Q or not P and Q, I'm doing an or of these of these two. I'm doing an or of these two. So that would be uh, regions one and three. Or is like a union and is like an intersection in all of this analysis. And so the point of that whole thing is that this statement is logically the same because it's the same regions as the one that we had here. When I originally wrote this out as the Boolean expression for the given circuit, I made a claim that there are other ways to write it, and actually this is another way to write it. I know that these guys are the same. They are logically equivalent. Actually, the circuits would look different, but they would have the same output in every, uh, every possible input, would produce the same output. So they are logically equivalent Boolean expressions and logically equivalent circuits. And this is a particularly meaningful and useful um, expression, this thing that was called the exclusive OR. And so it actually has um, a symbol devoted just to that. Um, some, some people will use a, a circle with a plus in it as the exclusive OR. So really the only way to simplify it is just to, to, to turn it into a definition for that particular arrangement. There isn't really any other way to write it that's actually simpler. Um, it could be rewritten other ways, but I don't think I have any way that I could really make it simpler uh, to capture those regions in the diagram. Okay. Okay, the next example says, design a circuit for the following input-output table and write the corresponding Boolean expression. Well, actually, the way I want to do this is start with the Boolean expression and then build the circuit from that. Uh, and so what I'll do to get the answer uh, the fastest is to focus on these places where you see the ones. So in this case, in this example here, here, and here, and everywhere there's a one, I'm just going to link together expressions using ors in each of those places where there's a one. And everything else I just don't need to include in my, in my answer. And so, and then wherever you see a one, you'll use that variable. And when you see a zero, you just use the negation of that variable. So it'll come out like this. We'll say uh, P and Q and R. And that's because every one of those is a one. And that finishes the first row. And then on the second row, I don't use it. And then on the third row, I have P, not Q, and R. So P and not Q because it's a zero and R. So you see that I'm linking together with ands everything that I see in that row 
And if it's a one, I write the letter. If it's a zero, I write not that letter. So I'm right here on the third row and R. And then or, and I'll get the last row, it's P and not Q and not R. P and not Q and not R. What you're doing essentially is that that statement would be true if you've got uh, P is a 1, Q is a 1, and R is a 1, and so you'd end up with a true there or a 1. This would be true in this case if you have this is true and this is true and that is true. And for not Q to be true, you'd have to have a 0 for Q, which is what we have. And so that would show a 1 just only in that case. And then this one would show a 1 when you have P is 1, Q is 0, and R is 0, because these guys would turn into 1s. So the whole thing would be a 1 just in that one case. That's the third case. And then the whole thing would be a 1 if either this or this or this was a 1, which is what we want, just exactly that. So that is um, really the answer for the Boolean expression. And um, I think that I'm uh, going to say generally that's what we'll do. Uh, of course, the question is, can you write it any simpler? And uh, you can, and I'll do that. But it didn't specifically ask for us to simplify it. So I will say that that is correct based on the directions to write the corresponding Boolean expression. It is a, a corresponding Boolean expression. It hasn't been simplified, and I'm going to do that in a minute. Um, but I, I think even before you simplify it, you can just build the circuit from what we have here. And so let's let's just do that. So here's the expression again, uh, the one that I want to design the circuit for. And the first thing to notice is that there are three variables. So when there are three variables in a circuit, you can begin with each of those lined up kind of like this. And each of them are therefore inputs. So I'll draw them to be inputs now. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of designing this from the sort of final end the end of the circuit will be a linkage of all of these groups. This group, this group two, this group three, group one and two and three are all going to input into ORs at the very end. There'll be an OR of three inputs. Now we can begin, let's, if we, if we call that one, we can begin with this parenthesis number one that is an AND of all three of those inputs. So since they're all going to go Let's just bring them closer together so we can um, put it in this symbol. And the symbol for AND something like that. And then that's going to spit out a result that will eventually go into an OR that I will combine with group 2. So let's now look at group 2. So because we're again using the same letters, P, Q, and R, what we could do is just break off from these paths and say that path there's a node where the signal splits, and I'll just carry it down so I can use it again. And then I'll just move over a little bit so my lines don't overlap so that it's a little bit more readable. So I'll have this Q signal split. And also, of course, I'm going to use R. So that's going to split, and R is going to move down. Now what I look at in this group two is that I have a negation of Q. So I need to follow this Q. This is sort of like a, a subway line, the Q line. What happens to it? It gets negated. So when it turns, I need to add a knot. The symbol for knot is like a triangle. It's math, requires a pencil. You draw that so they don't sort of crash into each other. These subway lines have to be uh, not running into each other. So now I can put together this group two as just the continuation of the signal from P and the negation of Q and a continuation of the signal of R. These guys all move together as inputs. And it's another AND. So here's AND. And that spits out a result that's eventually going to be combined together. Maybe that's where the combinational circuit is. This is the name comes from. This is group three. And group three is uh, just, again, the 
using the variables PQ and R, and I can go back to the original lines PQ and R that I drew, or I can just say that I can split again these lines PQ and R. So I think I'll just do it that way. I'll just say this line just continues. This is the line for P, and what I'm trying to do is this group three. So in group three, I want to take the signal from P, and I want to negate the signals from Q and R. So it's this signal from R that is negated, and this signal from Q that is negated. So both of these guys get a little not gate on them. The Q signal, the R signal. Q signal right there. R signal is a little wavy. I could have made this one solid line. Not sure if that's helping. Could have made this one solid line. So I know there's an input from P, there's an input from Q that is negated, an input from R that is negated, and those guys combine together as an AND. And from that gate, there's an output. And then all of these outputs, this is really group one. There's two. There's three. And I remember that I was going to take groups one, two, and three and link them all together with an OR. So that's what I'll do finally here. And the symbol for OR looks like that. I think it's like the logo for Star Trek. Here's the OR. And then that would be an output that would would now require some other variable, maybe S. And so the output S has a signal that is equivalent to all of those. Okay, so that's it. That's the circuit. Um, and I want to look at the possibility of simplifying that uh, Boolean expression. Not that it asked for it, but I want to go through that. Uh, we might use that some later, uh, simplifying one of these expressions. So let's take a look at how that would work. It's these um, logical equivalencies that I'm going to refer to as I go through this simplification. I'm going to use a number of these. So you might want to print out this page and, and look at it as I, as I go through this, this uh, analysis of how it simplifies. All right, let's see if we can begin back where we were with this original expression that we got from the input-output table. I had P and Q and R, or P and not Q and R, or P and not Q and not R. And I'm going to look through that list of equivalencies and see if I can find some ways in which I can I can simplify it and and I do the first thing I realize when I see the P here here and here is that I can do kind of an extension of this distributive law and the one that I'm going to use is that if you have an or of two ands two or three I'm going to extend it to th there's three ors P is being anded with each of those components in that, in those, in those individual ORs. I'm basically going to say factor out the P by the distributive law. So that means it'll be equivalent to this. Take the P out in front and say AND, and then the remaining factors. When I factor out P out of this first one, I'll just get Q and R. And then when I factor out P out of this group, I'm going to get the negation of Q and R, or copying the or. And then when I factor the P out, I'm going to get just this, negation Q and negation R. OK, now I'm going to use the distributive property again, because I have in these two, first two expressions, 
uh, I have a, an R that repeats. I'm going to factor R out of these two. I could have factored not R out of these two or not Q out of these two. But the, the thing that I saw first was the repeating R, and I decided to factor that out. So I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to say factoring out R out of these two terms, or these two component, these two ORs, um, there's an R. And since I'm using the distributive property, I'm going to say R and. And then what's left when you factor the R out is Q or not Q. Now what I've just done is factoring with just these guys and so that's where I'm copying it and then I have no factoring happening here so I'm just going to leave that the way it was negation Q and negation R but the reason to do that is to take advantage of some of these like for example I've got the Q and the not Q I could have done this other ways but this will certainly work so now I have a definite simplification that we can apply. When you say Q or not Q, that's another one of my properties. Q or not Q, that's basically what's called the negation law in this table. It just means um, something that is always true. So if I took another step here, just one little step, I could just say that's R and something that's basically always true. And then this I won't simplify yet. I'll just leave it as it is. That's always true. So if you take R with something that's an and, something that's always true, it would only be true when R is true. It could be simplified to just R. So this is equivalent to P and. Now I have R or negation Q and negation R. Now we're getting really close, almost there. This is almost simplified. Just carrying over to the next page here. Uh, I can use a distributive property with OR that I see right there and distribute the R in. And the reason to do that is to take advantage of the R and not R that will simplify. Uh, actually, it'll become an OR, sorry, because there's an OR here. So this, this becomes equivalent to P and and then by the distributive property, R or not Q, it's R or not Q and R or not R. R or not R. And that's nice to see. That's going to simplify right there as always true. And so speeding up here I know that any time we have an and with a true we'll just have that expression so the next line could be P and well I don't even really need brackets anymore it's just this quantity R or negation Q and so really that's it um, let's write it P and R or not Q now I could change the order of the and I could change the order of the or, uh, but this is basically my simplified um, simplified form. Now, there's a lot of steps in there, and I could have made a mistake anywhere along that way, so how do I know for sure that that's actually right? Well, you do a truth table for this and compare it with that input-output table, see if it's really the same. Um, it would be another equivalent expression. It would be the same truth table as the uh, original, more complex expression. Okay, so I decided I wanted to check that this was actually equivalent, so I did a truth table for this expression, and that is equivalent to the one that I actually did there. Uh, I came out with a slightly different order because of the way that I did it in the video, but I know these are the same because the or is commutative. So negation Q or R is the same as R or negation Q. So a truth table for this guy, where I'm using ones and zeros instead of trues and falses, I created, I have three variables, of course, so I created my um, eight different cases. I went 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, then repeated 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. And the R is the one that I did four in a row with it true and four in a row with it false. And I did the truth table uh, and uh, or the input-output table, and I came up with these places where I got a 1. And so then I looked back at that original input-output to see if, in fact, this is a Boolean expression. 
that would be equivalent to that original one. So let's go back now and look at that original input output table. And here it is. Now you notice that actually the cases are in a different order. We have four in a row here where P is one and then four where it's zero, two and two zeros and two ones and two zeros. And so the cases are different, but in each of the cases, let's take the first one, each of the cases where I get a one here, it's also going to be a one in the other uh, table. So that it really is equivalent. Um, say for example, the first case where P, Q and R all are all one, I get one for S. When they're when P, Q, and R are all one, if this is S, then yeah, S is equal to one in that case. How about when it's one, zero, one, one, zero, one, that's a case where we get one for the output. And then the other, only other case is one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero. That's the only other case where I get a one. So this is all correct. It is an equivalent truth table, and this is an equivalent expression uh, to the one that had been given originally, and it's a simplified expression. All right, that finishes that example. Let's move on to the last example that I'll do. It's this one. The question begins, uh, the lights in the kitchen are controlled by two light switches, one switch at each door to the kitchen. If the light is on, flipping either switch will turn it off. And if it is off, flipping either switch will turn it back on. So assume the original state was the light off with both switches in the down position. Construct a circuit to model this kitchen light. Write the input-output table, the circuit diagram, and the corresponding Boolean expression for this light circuit uh, that's, that's described. So I have two switches. Uh, at the two different doors, so I'll call those P and Q, and I'm going to start with the input output table. I think that's the easiest place to begin. So we have P and Q as the two switches at either door. We could begin with both of them. Let's say one is that they're up uh, and that the light is would be off because you could say in the case that they're both down, off, the light is off. So these are my, my four cases. If I go one, zero, so I could make R a variable that tells us the state of the light, whether it's on or off. And they tell us in the question that, um, assume the original state was the light is off when both are in the down position, which I would consider off like a zero. So I know this has got to be zero because if both switches say off, the light is off originally at the beginning. So we could begin with that as an assumption. Uh, and then if either of them was flipped on, the light turns on. But then if they were both flipped, it would go back off again. Imagine if you walk in and flip it on and somebody else walks in and then flips it on, it would go back off. So that's the case there. And so that's my input output table. And actually this is the exclusive OR. So our light switch in the kitchen is modeling the exclusive OR. So since we've already done that, we could actually just jump to um, a form uh, for the Boolean expression just from what we did before, or we could actually quickly read it. You just what you do is you look at the two rows that have ones and uh, put them together with an OR. So what I could do is say P and not Q, or, and then put these together with an and, this row, link, so I would say not P and Q, right? So you, you link together with ands everything in a particular row. If it's a zero, you put not that variable. If it's a one, you put that variable. And then you do that for every row that, ha that uh, has, a, has an output of one, and all of those you link together with ors. So that's it. That's the Boolean expression for that exclusive OR. And as you saw earlier in the video, that that actually could be written different ways. And so it means that the circuit could be drawn different ways. And one way that I could draw the circuit, let's start with the two variables, P and Q. And let's have those inputs travel out like this. And 
I know that it's all going to combine as an or at the end with an R, uh, that, um, and that would produce an output called R. So I could begin with this group here. If I called that group 1, I'll, I'll do an and of these two inputs. But I need to negate the, the, uh, the, the Q. So we'll put not. And then these two inputs are combined here in an and. And that takes care of this part 1. But there's a part 2 here. There's a second group that I'm going to link together uh, to, for, the, for the final output. And they also use P and Q, so I'll just take a take this line from P and just split it off, bring it down here because I got more space down here, and then I'll split this guy uh, here, bring it down. Now I know what I want to do at this point is do not P and Q, so I'll do a negation of P. This is Q, so I went not P and Q. So this output and this one they they join together. In another and that's and number two and these two ands go together to form an or and that's where the output R figures in all right so that is one possible circuit for the exclusive or and you could sc scroll back or um, rewind back to looking at um, that I had a slightly different looking circuit that was also the exclusive OR. Right? That was back that was back in that example three. Let's see if I can find it. These were two different ways to state the exclusive OR. These are two different equivalent ways of writing it. So this was another circuit that is also the exclusive OR. So this would have been good for the last example with the light switch as well. All right, that's the end of the video. Hopefully it was helpful.